Hello everyone, I'm Justin and for today's video we are joining an idol group. So let's grab your bag, put on your shoes and get... Zombieland Saga is what you get when you combine all the key elements of an idol group. Add some comedy and then kill everyone, cause this is a zombie show. The main story follows Sakura Minamoto, who dies after a truck ran her over but instead of getting isekai she is brought back as a zombie 10 years later by a man called Kotaro Natsumi, who for some reason thought it was a good idea to put together a zombie idol group to revitalize the Saga prefecture. Thus, Franchuchu is made. There are six girls in this group. Sakura, the first to wake up. Saki, the delinquent. I, a former idol, Junko, an all-time idol from the 1980s, Yuguri, a 19th century courtesan, Lily, a child actress, and Tai, the one who acts like a zombie all the time. This group joins to create the most legendary idol group of all saga, and with that premise, let's move on to review this anime, the good, the bad, and its ending. There will be major spoilers ahead, so keep that in consideration. Okay, let's move on to our first topic. Where can I start talking about the good qualities of this anime? From the beginning, you know what you're getting into, as the literal first scene of the show shows Sakura getting ran over by a truck. And after that, you may think, oh, this is just another idol anime, just with a twist about uh, some zombies. But no, 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 no. This is so much more than that. The first episode serves as an introduction for all the girls as well as their manager and since all the girls are still acting as zombies it's Sakura's job to lead them into a battle of the bands competition but what is this? Heavy metal? Surely our girls will stick to just generic pop or dancing. Oh, yes, these girls start screaming like zombies and breaking their necks just to go along with the music. In the second episode, we start to get a bit of a backstory of the girls and then they go to a retirement home. And well, I guess they shouldn't be singing heavy metal, so let's just go with normal music. <laughs> And here comes the rap battle. Seriously, every episode the girls were doing something so unexpected and entertaining you would think that this was just a parody anime. I don't know how they did it to keep me entertained every single episode. When I start to get used to the different performances, they bring back the zombie side of things by screaming or trying to scare some cops. Then they move on to promoting their band by doing some commercial sponsorships and many more. And when you think there can be anything new, the backstory hits you. I thought I came here for the comedy. What are all these feelings inside of me? Well, the comedy of an enemy is top notch, the drama is at the same level and they know how to perfectly combine both of them. Well, Saki's backstory about how she died in a bike race against a rival gang and seeing her friend grow up and having a kid was really touching. And of course, having the longest episode name ever, and this is no joke, the real name of the episode is... Though my life may have ended once, by some twist of fate I have risen, and if a song and dance are to be my fate, then carrying the memories of my comrades in my heart as I sally forth shall be my saga. What a mouthful. So while I enjoyed it, it wasn't as good as touching as the Lily's backstory. You see, in this episode, Lily's dad starts going to the group concert after recognizing Lily. And watching the perspective of a dad who lost his kid is really touching moment in the series. But then we find out the way Lily died and oh my god, it's so dumb. Apparently, Lily was a transgender and always act like a girl, but as she grew older, she started having some facial hair, which made her die out of shock. I know, right? 
and the episode finishes with Lily inviting his dad and singing a song just for him, as a way to say goodbye and thank you. I'm not crying, you are crying. And to be honest, even if the show was half as good as it is, it would still be really enjoyable just for one single reason. <laughs> this guy's voice actor, Mamoru Miyano, who apparently is known for doing all the crazy guys' voices in animes, like Pandora's actor from Overlord or Osamu Dasai from Bungo Stray Dogs. But I believe this anime was his peak performance, the full energy he brought into every single line, the constant changing of pace and basically screaming, you could feel how the guy was just having fun while delivering every single line, and while all the girls had their moments, I feel like he was the best character in the series by a landslide. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing I want to mention is the opening of this anime. And while I think the music is not as good, the thing that makes it stand out is the animation. The use of parodies like Kamen Rider, Zombies and Magical Girls, and of course the idol industry, makes it really interesting set of scenes to watch. And with that said, Let's move on to our next topic. While overall I can't really complain on the main plot, the pacing or the interactions between the characters, one thing I personally think is really boring and I always skip in animes is the songs and the CGI idol scenes that all idol anime have. And while this anime has some really interesting songs like the heavy metal and the rap, there are still some boring pop idol songs that got the typical CGI production that I couldn't help but skip. With a few exceptions, like the electric thunderstorm scene where the girls get light effects and autotune after getting hit by a lightning, or the last uh, dance in the last episode. But aside from that, this show was a masterpiece, so let's move on to our last topic. The ending of this anime starts at the end of episode 10, where Sakura gets hit by a truck yet again and regains her memories but forgets her zombie memories. She becomes pessimistic about life after finding out that she died and how every time she puts effort into something, it backfired. But the manager is determined on not giving up on her, as we see some flashbacks that they were classmates when they were kids, and it is hinted that one of the reasons he made the group was to fulfill her dream as an idol. Tai, who still keeps acting like zombie, tries to reason with her, and with the help of the other girls, they convince Sakura to rejoin the group. But unfortunately, a, son a snowstorm hits the venue, but that doesn't stop them, as they sing and dance regardless. And during that time, Sakura finally regains her memories and succeeds in becoming a famous idol group. To me, this anime felt like a really well thought shot that was never supposed to be either about zombies or an idol group. But it was way more than that. With a bit of comedy, mystery and drama, and so much more, this anime will always be remembered as one of a kind for me. And while this show finished in 2018, there will be a new season called Zombieland Saga Revenge in Spring 2021, which will probably focus on the cliffhanger of a periodist starting to notice that the connections between the idol members and the people they were when they were alive, and of course I think there will be some more information about Tai's past, who never spoke in the in the show, and y Yugiri, as there was a conversation about the manager and a bartender that mentioned something about they knowing each other. While I enjoyed the show, I hope the second season can bring more information about the backstories and a complete ending to this story, but we'll just have to wait and see. And with that said, we come to the conclusion of this anime review. What did you guys thought of the Zombieland saga? Who was your favorite girl? Let me know in the comments below. Until then, see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.